Hey, it's Phil with Timber and Rose Realty Group, and I wanted to update our should I wait or should I buy uh, video because we still are getting this question every week at least. So I um, wanted to jump into what the economists are saying coming into 2022 and what we can expect for this year. Is, is the market going to slow down and should we wait to buy or are things going to speed up? Are they going to stay the same? What not? So right now I've got a uh, article from Realtor Magazine and this is kind of an interesting thing. Uh, I think a lot of you guys that have seen our past videos on whether you should buy or wait in the past market uh, know that you get misled a lot by national headlines. And when anytime we try to group the entire country into one market and say, you know, the market's going up or it's going down or whatnot, um, it's just misleading. And so all we can do is really focus on Portland metropolitan area um, and talk to you about those specific market stats. So we'll get into it. So here we are, 2022. Again, you can see this title here from Realtor Magazine, uh, national publication experts, housing market likely to normalize in 2022. So the question right off the bat is, well, great, I should probably wait then, right? Because uh, things are going to get better. Normalizing meaning what? Well, a normal market, a healthy market might be six months of inventory. Um, and that is the point, breaking point that it goes from a seller's market, which it is now, to a buyer's market when the buyers are in control and they get to offer under list price and things like that. Um, this kind of goes over and, and talks about how some things are softening. We're going to see sales possibly decline to 5.9 million units in 2022. That's, again, um, a projection. We don't know that for sure is going to happen. Um, and they hope that there's going to be a, a modest increase in housing starts, meaning we're going to be building more homes, uh, relieving the inventory. So they say all this. And then at the end, uh, they talk about the realities. And that's that there's regional differences uh, that affect the housing market. And that's what I was just talking about, where we really have to know what's happening in the Portland metropolitan area. I can tell you that um, one interesting statistic is that not as many people are moving to Portland, uh, according to the local economists, um, as projected. Um, people are still coming, uh, just like they're going to Idaho in droves. They're going to Austin, Texas in droves. People are still going to Raleigh, North Carolina in droves. Um, people are still coming to Portland. It's just not as strong as it was in the last five years or so. Um, and so that's going to change things a little bit. And then it talks about these demographic um, things in the future that we need to talk about. And these are the big ones here. The first one, as we've been talking about for the last, you know, 10, 15 years, seeing this come, baby boomers. Baby boomers are still retiring. They're still of that age that they're supposed to be um, downsizing their properties. And they're not doing that. It says baby boomers, they want to age in place and continue to hold on to their homes. Why? Because interest rates are still so low, under 5%. Um, right now, they're at like 3.75%, and they just went up yesterday. Um, they're still so low, it makes more sense for a baby boomer to refinance their property and then just stay there as they're traveling and things like that. They're comfortable in their houses. They really don't want to go down to a condo that has a bunch of stairs and things like that. So baby boomers are not moving out of their houses, which is, again, affecting our inventory, and it continues to do that. Here it talks about the ongoing inventory shortfall. And then we've got the millennials, the next biggest generation. And there's still millennials out there that are trying to buy homes in their 30s. And millennials are the largest generation of potential buyers, but they face significant headwinds such as low inventory, okay, brought on by the baby boomers and, and other things, uh, high prices, and student loan debt. Okay, So we still have a lot of millennials out there buying um, and still looking to get into homes as soon as they get past their debt and can you know get past that. And then we have a drop in birth rates. So uh, what this means is that we're not seeing as many people move out of their house so that first time home buyers or or people that want to get into a smaller like a you know a three bedroom two bath home um, can do that right that's kind of the thing is like when people have babies they want to move out of a three bedroom home and maybe move into a four bedroom home and then once they retire uh, then they want to move back down to a two or three bedroom condo or something like that that's how it used to play out right now it's not doing that and so what all this means is you can always go over to um, timberandrose.com and right here uh, on market update, you can always get the month's most up-to-date uh, market updates. And here we have our market action report. And here's a thing that you need to look at right here. This is our months of inventory. Months of inventory, as you can see, remember I talked about six months 
that's 6.0 months being um, the point in time where the buyers get to get a good deal on a house. Um, anything under that means that the sellers are in control, meaning there's a, many more buyers that are trying to buy a house. They're going to bid that price up. You can see in the last three years, since 2019, it was like half of being a buyer's market. And it just continued to drop month over month over month over month. Went up a little bit, then came back down. And then we got into a really interesting, scary time where it became less than a month. 1.0 basically means that if nothing new came on the market tomorrow, everything would be sold up uh, one month from now. So there'd be nothing left on the market to buy. That means there's not a lot of inventory. And you can see what happens is it went down to 0.8 and then hovered at 1, then at 0 0.8, 0 0.7, and went back up to 1. And we were really hoping it was going to stay there, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, and then just dropped to 0.6. Now, this could be because of the holidays. Just homeowners are not putting their houses on the market generally in December. They're waiting until January. So I do fully expect that number to increase um, as, um, as the year goes up. It's not probably going to stay down at about a half of a month because that's terrible. It basically means in two weeks, if nothing new comes on the market in two weeks, there is nothing to buy in our area, period. Nothing, no matter how bad a shape, how bad location, how high a price. So it tells you that there's just huge inventory problems, but the new listings um, is not really the issue. It's it's really, you can kind of see here, there's new, new listings from 2020 have increased 5.4%. That means we're getting more people selling their homes. So why is there so much less inventory? It's just because we still have so many buyers. We just have such a strong buyer demand. So the question is, should you wait or should you buy? And the answer is you should always buy sooner than later. Let me show you a graph real quick to make my point. Again, these are all these graphs, stats. If you love numbers, um, you know we're happy to walk you through all these numbers. At the end of the day, this is what all that matters really you know you can see since 2013 and even further back the graph would just go like this the the value is going to continue to go up it may not go up in double digits like we saw this last year i'll show you right here real quick it says here um that we have um comparing from 2021 to 2020 um we saw the average sales price increase 15.8 percent okay um, if you want to look at the median price, it increased 15.7%. So we're talking about almost 16%. We'll just, we'll call it 15% to be conservative. Even if this year things calm down a little bit and let's say we only have a 10% increase in, in home values, a lot of economists might say more like seven to 9% to be more conservative. Um, you're still looking at the graph going up and to the right. Okay. Meaning that home prices are going up. So the longer you wait, the more home prices are going to go up. The longer you wait, the more interest rates are going to go up. We just saw them go up again uh, yesterday to 3.75%, and they're on their way up to 4%. Um, it, just, it just does not make financial sense to wait. If you think the market's going to soften, if you think we're in a bubble, um, you know, don't take my word for it. I'm going to tell you that we're absolutely not. But here you can take the data's word for it. Here's the data. It goes all the way back, at least in this graph to, you know, eight years ago. And so, um, you know, look at those numbers. Give us a call if you have any questions. If you are ready to start your home buying journey, uh, one of the best ways you can do that is to come to timberandrose.com and just click on buyer class. And we offer every month, uh, just happens to be the next one will be January 20th um, at 12 p.m., we offer a, a home buying class. It's absolutely free and it's just a fun, brief way of finding out everything you need to know about the process, the current market, um, any questions you have about financing and getting money for a loan, um, all those questions will be answered at that time. So join us for that. You can always go again to timberandrose.com, go to buyer class, um, and uh, we hope to see you there. We hope to be of service to you in 2022, um, and we hope to get you in a house sooner than later so that you can watch your equity and uh, home values uh, go through the roof. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you have a great year. Talk to you soon.